but the result was that he felt so disrespected by her that he literally shut down and refused to have sex with her. He refused. Hey everybody, it's Busy Mark and I am back with another video, but before we begin, I am pleased to announce that The Modest Fitting has officially launched a women's clothing boutique offering skirts and dresses that embody modesty, femininity, and beauty. To learn more about dresses like this one and others available for purchase, head over to themodestfitting.com. But without further ado, let's begin. All right, and so I am back with another segment of my book review on The Great Sex Rescue. And um, this portion of the book that I'm going to be taking a look at is a segment, and I'm going to probably be summarizing, I won't be reading too directly from the book, but um, they, they dedicated a space to the book in discussing sexless marriages and how people um, end up finding themselves there. A lot of, um, from, from just like a top level view, they said that they received a lot of communication from men who said that their wives just had their last child and then just announced that they weren't gonna be having sex or they had a hysterectomy and then just announced that they weren't gonna be having sex. And it was just like, you know, there were countless husbands writing in um, saying that their wives had taken unilateral decisions to just deprive them of sex. And so they decided to look into it and figure out, you know, what is actually going on here. And what they found is that more often than not, while these decisions feel like they came out of nowhere, oftentimes they didn't just come out of nowhere it's something that's been slowly building in the process and uh, i just wanted to add my own two cents about affirming some of the things that the book is asserting um, one of the things in here um, is we talked about i think in the last video about how some women may find themselves in a marriage where they discover that they're married to a man who is a lazy lover or a selfish lover and um, I think that that's a very real possibility. And so you have to be under uh, aware of the vulnerabilities that you would face in a situation like that. But in the same manner, wives can sometimes be the lazy and selfish lover. And in this section of the book, they were going over a man whose, um, you know, wife, it, it wasn't that, you know, the sex was unfulfilling. The sex was fulfilling. He always prioritized her. Uh, being fulfilled her orgasm in the in the sex and and so he was doing his part But she just said that after you know, they would both work full-time and they would come home uh, She'd get dinner ready put the, uh, their son to sleep and then at the end of the night He'd be wanting to connect with her sexually and she said, you know, I just rather I just rather watch Netflix and so for um, many for a prolonged period of time she carried on in that pattern just not necessarily dealing with a husband who wasn't seeing his responsibility through to fulfill her but she just couldn't really be bothered and he went out of his way it says that he um take over some of the dishes he would do some of the cooking for her he would make sure that she had nights off from child care so she could have other times to just do things for herself hoping that all of these things would work together to refresh her so that she would be willing to pour into him sexually and she just never did and so it's interesting i think we have to remember that in the in the same way that you have to be mindful and just come to terms with you may have a, a husband who's a lazy and sexual lover um, you have to come to terms with the fact that, okay, but what if it's you? Like, what if you're the wife who just can't be bothered? It's not that he's not doing his job to bring you to orgasm. You just rather do something else. That's very selfish. It's very selfish to, to know that your spouse is, um, when, if you're, if you're married to a man who is of integrity and character, he is going to obey the Lord and to only seek sexual fulfillment in the marriage. And so for your husband to be doing everything that he's supposed to do and for you to just not um, give him something that he needs, even when he is doing his part, like he makes sex fulfilling for you. He makes it rewarding for you. He, he cares about you. He's helping you in other ways so that you'll be like, that's incredible selfishness. And so I'm glad that they spoke on it because um, that's a real thing that can happen. And I think, I think right now it's popular to like man bash and I'm not team man and I'm not team woman either. I'm team right. So whatever is right is the position that I'm going to always affirm. And so while it's popular to man bash, I think sometimes what 
focusing on the faults of men can make us blind to our own faults as women. There, that verse in the Bible says, before you take the speck out of your neighbor's eye, take the plank out of your own. And I think it's very popular to point out wrong things about men that may very well be accurate, but we also have to make sure that we're dealing with ourselves. So that's a good point. Make sure that you're not the lazy and selfish lover in the marriage, because that, just like that hurts the wife, it really hurts the husband. The other thing that the book touched on, and this was in a different section, that can sometimes contribute to sexlessness in marriage is the use of pornography. Uh, oftentimes, um, it's usually the husband, but it's not only the husband. I have known women who have struggled with addiction to pornography and struggle with it just as much as the man to get free of it. More often than not, though, it's usually the man. And what happens is a husband will not really um, feel the need to be bothered to go through the motions of having sex with his wife because he is channeling and funneling all of his um, sexual attention to pornography. Um, and it is just a matter of research that demonstrates that prolonged pornography consumption will either lead to one or all of the above or any combination of the three of either erectile dysfunction premature ejaculation or delayed ejaculation and delayed ejaculation just means like it just never comes like your body is never able to reach um climax and so the sex just drags on and on and on and it never stops and i knew a couple whose wife the wife made a unilateral decision that she's just not um She's just not having sex anymore. And it interestingly was after, shortly after menopausal hysterectomy timeline, somewhere in there, she just made the decision that, um, you know, she just wasn't gonna have sex anymore. But digging deeper into it and learning more about the situation, I was able to learn and affirm what this book is saying as it goes as far as it goes to pornography use is that the husband had been using pornography for years on end. And the pornography ultimately rendered him with a severe case of erectile dysfunction. And so that made sex largely frustrating, unfulfilling, and it's sometimes impossible, not just for him, but for her as well. It made sex between them impossible. And so it became, a, uh, and then the, the decrease in sex because of the erectile dysfunction only plunged him further into pornography usage and consumption and her more into her stance of, I'm not going to bother having sex. It's not good anyway. And so it's important that I think we understand, um, how pornography can make um, a negative impact in a marriage and it's something to be avoided at all costs. And I, I would even go as far to say, you know, it wasn't until later in my adulthood, I knew that watching pornography was not okay, but I never really considered, hey, even movies and shows that, depri that depict sexually graphic images, that's gotta be cut out. Like it can't be like, there were shows on HBO that I used to watch and I never gave any thought to them until one day my, uh, the, our pastor in our church was like, hey, if you're watching this show, I won't even say the name of the show, but he was like, guys, like that's, that's pornographic. And I was like, he's right. And so we have to be so careful about the things that we set in front of our eyes, even, um, in a light way, that's not, it's not light. If they're sexually graphic images, um, sexually suggestive things in the shows, in the movies, um, obviously all the way to porn, that stuff has gotta go because it gets in your mind and it literally rewires the way that your brain fires arousal and responds to sexual stimuli and it can make it so that sex between two real life people can become impossible. And I, I'm not just saying that because of what I've heard, like where it's like, oh, I read this in an article. I know people who have actually gone through this where they, where the husband thought, you know, all men look at porn, that's fine. And now he's in a situation where he literally cannot have sex with his wife because he cannot, main, he cannot achieve or maintain an erection. 
And so then he just continues to be okay watching porn. And then the, and then the wife eventually was like, we're not even going to try this anymore. We're just going to be in a sexless marriage. And so I wanted to um, include that. They, they go into more detail about the effects of pornography usage and how it can be a snare to both husbands and wives and how we need to make sure that we don't introduce that kind of wickedness into our minds, into our marriages, into our lives, any of those things, because the costs are real. They're delayed, but they're real. And this notion that like, yeah, every guy does it, every guy does it, but they're not telling you what's happening on the latter end. They're not telling you that the guy who's like, yeah, you know, I watch porn. And then like in a couple of years, he can't even have sex with his wife. Like he can't. And so I'm like, we, we got to take this seriously because the impact that it has on marriage is real. Um, another um, scenario that they discussed that related to sexlessness in marriage was a husband who had fits of rage. He would get into these like bombastic arguments with his wife. Um, you know, it, it was just on and on and on. And she told him, you know, like every time you do this, this is negatively impacting me. Like this is really hurting me. I don't, I don't feel safe with you. Like I don't even want to have sex with you. And he just never took her seriously. And one day he snapped like he had always done and he probably verbally berated her. And she just, she never announced it. She just made a decision within herself that she was not going to have sex with him ever again. And then the book goes on to say, let's think about this scenario. He admits that he scared her repeatedly throughout their marriage, so much so that she felt she had to protect herself, even though he's trying to serve her. This is, he, he at this point he's like, he realized he needed to repair his marriage, so he started to just do little things for her, like get her, buy her her coffee, just the way that she likes it. Um, you know, try to plan dates for them, think about what kind of food she likes, plan a date around that. So that's what they mean by serve. Even though he was trying to serve her now, the ways he is serving her, all the things he should have been doing in the first place, yet he is still upset that she just isn't jumping at the chance to give him a hand job. Now, the reason why that last part is in there is because eventually she did concede into performing acts that would help him achieve orgasm, but she refused to have intercourse with him. And at one point he, he asked her, can we begin having sex again? And she said, no. He's like, he's like, does it bring, he's like, is it fulfilling at all for you to like, you know, see that you can bring me to orgasm? Like, can't we, can't we go beyond this just from probably oral sex or, or a hand job? Can we move to intercourse? She said, that doesn't really do anything for me. I'm just doing it for you as, as a, as a favor, but it's not something that I enjoy anymore. And so, and he's, and he got upset about that. He got upset with her telling him that sex is not something that she does for her enjoyment it doesn't bring her pleasure she's just doing it because she kind of feels obligated um, from not having intercourse with him from all of the years of emotional and verbal abuse she said many sexless marriages have at their root not a selfish refusal on the part of one spouse but rather an attempt at emotional protection and I wanted to take time to talk about that because in this case that they're including in the book, this is about a husband's unruly, uncontrolled anger, making his home an unsafe place for his wife and her response was to just shut down. I have seen this exact thing in the reverse. I've seen a husband withhold sex from his wife for months on end and it was for a similar reason. Uh, one of my friends told me that all of a sudden, you know, her husband, he just would not have sex with her. Despite her trying to initiate sex, he would not do it. And at the time that she was telling me, I didn't have enough life experience to be able to really provide her meaningful feedback and really think about it. Because at the time I was like, well, you know, he's getting older, he may be changing. Um, you know, things might be different. He might be stressed at work. Like just give him some time to adjust. But now that I'm a little bit older and I look back at that situation, I know exactly what was going on because it's the, the same depiction that was happening here. This was a wife who admittedly from her own words told me that she had a very bad habit of being extremely disrespectful to her husband. She would use her mouth as a weapon to tear him down. It didn't matter 
what it was. If he wanted to do something that she did not want him to do, she would disrespect him verbally. So if it was, I remember one example was he wanted to go running late at night and she didn't think it was a good idea for him to run late at night. So she just shouted at him until he submitted. The other thing is that they went to a restaurant and he wanted to order um, like a pork belly taco and she didn't want him eating that unhealthy food so she disrespected him until he submitted. Now here's the background. With this particular situation, um, this friend of mine unexpectedly lost a parent. The parent without warning died. And I think the death of that parent so traumatized her that when she got into her marriage, she, she made a determination within herself that she would never be traumatized with unexpected death like that again. So when you understand that, it makes sense why she would get nervous about her husband going running late at night. What if someone didn't see him and they hit him with a car? So she would disrespect him so that he'd stay home. It now makes sense when you consider she didn't want him eating high fat foods lest he develop some disease and die. And then she would have to experience the trauma of uh, um, unexpected death again. So she tried to control his food and how she control it by disrespecting him. In the long run, her unresolved trauma over the loss of her um, parent caused her to be very disrespectful to her husband in an attempt to control him so she would not lose someone unexpectedly again. But the result was that he felt so disrespected by her that he literally shut down and refused to have sex with her. He refused. He knew that if it came to trying to talk with her about it, trying to talk through it wasn't gonna work because when it comes to the verbal war, she's always gonna win. She's got more ammo in her tank than he did. So he controlled the thing he felt like he could control was whether he was not going to have sex with her or not. And so I have seen this exact same scenario play out in the opposite. And so I wanna warn women who are wives uh, women who are soon to be wives or hope to be wives, that part of your husband needing your respect, your admiration and your appreciation, but above those things, the respect piece, we have, I think as women, we have no idea how detrimental it is if we deprive our husbands of respect or even worse still apply disrespect. It does something devastating to that man and to his sense of self and he will retaliate. A lot of men retaliate in different ways when they feel disrespected by women. Some ways are more heinous and some ways are more passive. This is one of the, the more passive ways that men can process through feeling disrespected by their wives is they will withhold sex. And I'm certain that I don't, I don't believe in this situation that there was another woman. I don't believe that. I know the husband. He's not that kind of man. I don't believe that there was pornography usage. I can't know for sure because I'm not in that marriage, but from the surface, it didn't appear as though that was something that, that he ever struggled with or that was even casually mentioned. Um, so I don't think that those things are at play. I think he was just so hurt by his wife's disrespect that he made a decision to be in a sexless marriage with her. And I'm still not certain if to this day they recovered from it because I know that she still has that bad habit of disrespecting her husband. Now the disrespect is being fueled by fear but it's disrespect nonetheless. So don't let that be something that drives sexlessness into your marriage because the unresolved trauma caused the disrespect, then caused the sexlessness, and then introduced a host of other problems. It just gets, it's a snowball effect. So each one of us has to take time to recognize, where am I hurting? Where am I broken? Let me take that to the Lord so that I don't hurt the people around me with this unresolved brokenness. All right, and so that's all that I have for this section of the um, of the review. I thought that these are really good points to discuss, especially how emotional hurt can sometimes create sexlessness in a marriage on both sides, on both the husband and the wife, how pornography usage is devastating and how it's a snowball that is one problem that creates another problem that then creates another problem then creates the foundation for other huge problems in marriage. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on this portion about you know, what, what causes sexlessness in marriage? 
Um, whether the comments are positive or negative, leave them in the comment section below. As always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.